watercolour pencils tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about seven mistakes I see beginners make time and time again so that you can avoid them. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour and a little bit of mixed media too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. Now watercolour pencils are very popular on my channel, you all love watercolour pencils and I think I know why. Now over the years of teaching beginners I have found that they're very attracted to watercolour pencils. Of course it seems a little bit easier, it's a little bit easier to control a pencil than a brush and you can get in less mess with watercolour pencils. However I do feel that some of you are limiting yourself a little bit and making the same mistakes over and over again. So in this video I'm going to go through seven mistakes I see people making a lot and also going to encourage you just to expand your practice a little bit more so that you get better results from your watercolour pencils work. So mistake number one that you can make with watercolour pencils is not using the right paper. So I'm going to point the camera downwards in a minute and give you some examples. But there are three types of paper that you shouldn't be using. One would be too smooth, one would be too rough and one would be too thin. So let's have a look at all of those types of paper and look at what you should be using instead. So let's look at this idea of paper. So I've got here, this is just some printer paper. Now, one of the things that's wrong with it, of course, is that it's so thin that I'll probably pick up almost like a, uh, you know, a wax tracing of the, uh, of the thing that's behind it, so that's one problem. But the main problem with this sort of paper is that it's just going to wrinkle as soon as I get water onto it. Now, most of you wouldn't paint on uh, printer paper unless you were very short of supplies, but there you can see already, you know, as soon as you get water on this sort of paper, it wrinkles up. Now cartridge paper, which is for drawing, is a little bit better, but you're still going to get an awful lot of this goes on. And if it's quite thin cartridge paper, you can easily just go through the paper. So you definitely want watercolour paper. So the rule is with watercolour paper, if you're going to wet the paper, you need watercolour paper. If you're going to work on dry paper, if it's a dry medium, you're not putting a wet paintbrush on it, then you can use cartridge paper or pastel paper for that sort of thing. But always with watercolour pencils, you want to be on proper watercolour paper. So this stuff is too thin. Cartridge paper, not as bad as this, but also too thin. The next problem can come when the paper is too rough. Now this actually isn't that rough because I have just moved house so I can't find any of my rough paper at the moment but I just want to give you a, an idea. This is sort of the roughest paper I've got here. And can you see how much of the, the grain shows through on that paper? Now that can be okay. If you've got a really good brand of watercolour pencils it may be that when the water hits this it just turns completely to paint and it's fine. But with a lot of brands of watercolour pencils, you're going to find that you're getting a bit of that grain left behind and it just doesn't give a very clean effect. Now we've got some really smooth paper. So now we've got some hot press paper. Now this is much better for applying the pencil. But the problem with hot press paper is that it's not great for painting on except for very specific uses like botanical work. When you have hot press smooth paper, paint tends to puddle and so you tend to get an awful lot of drying lines. So whilst this is easier to apply the pencils to, you may find that when you actually come to apply the water to it, you get really loads of hard edges very, very easily. So my recommendation when using watercolour pencils is that you use a standard knot surface or cold press surface. They both mean the same thing of watercolour paper. So if you've got a pad of watercolour paper, it doesn't really mention what it is. That'll just be your standard cold pressed or sometimes called knot surface. And that's really the best one because it gives you that ease of applying the watercolour pencils. But you should also get a nice blended effect because those tiny little dips in the paper will allow you to spread the water and the pigment nice and easily. So mistake number two with watercolour pencils would be not using a good brand. Now it's not in my nature to sort of, you know, stand here on YouTube and have a go at brands and basically you get what you pay for. So I'm not going to have a go at the cheaper brands because basically you're just paying for what you get, which is slightly less pigment and I'm not going to suggest that you throw all your watercolour pencils away and it's really tempting isn't it because they're very expensive and if you see that set for 140 and they're very nice price you get lots of colours you think oh that would be fantastic um, but I'm going to point the camera downwards in a second I'm just going to show you the difference between the cheaper pencils and the more expensive pencils now exactly the same goes for paint if you're buying cheaper stuff what you're paying for 
or rather what you're losing is the pigment. So it's always, always the pigment. So you might end up with beautiful looking pencils. You might end up with a lovely tin. You know, you might end up with a nice case that comes with them. The wood might look nice. They might have very pretty um, patterns on the outside or gold writing, you know, it might be lovely. But the most expensive thing is always the pigment and it's always the pigment that you lose. So I'm gonna show you the difference now between expensive ones and cheap ones. As I said, I'm not gonna to be too specific about brands. If you want to know very good brands, um, you can't go wrong with Derwin and Faber-Castell. They tend to be the top brands. So Derwin is British and Faber-Castell is German. And you know, you really can't go wrong with those brands. But beyond that, I'm not gonna you know, have a go at cheap brands or promote particularly expensive brands. I'm just gonna show you the difference. And I want you to consider that if you do have those cheaper pencils, perhaps you might want to add a few more expensive ones because you can generally buy pencils individually. You do not have to buy a whole set. You can go into an art shop or an online art retailer. You can just buy single colors. So think about the colors that you use most often and consider whether you might not want a few more expensive pencils. Let me show you the difference it makes. So let's look at the difference quality makes and quality is huge. So this pencil here is a Derwent Ink Tense. These regularly get top reviews for watercolor pencils. And this one here is just one that I got in a mixed set. It's so cheap that it isn't even really branded. Now this is the sort of set that you might buy in a stationer's or a drugstore. And you know, people give them to you for Christmas. I don't know about you, but I find that since I've been working as an artist or you know, since I've been starting to paint and draw, people will always find supplies at home and give them to me, which is lovely of them. But certain ones I just set aside either to give them to other people's children or just for some of my students to use if there's no other supplies available. So let's have a look at the difference between the pigment levels. Both of these are a green color, they're not the exact same green. So let's lay the cheaper one on here. And let's put the more expensive one on here. We'll try and put roughly the same amount of pencil on the paper. This one's a little bit of a darker color. And let's see the difference when we add water to these. So here's our cheaper one. Now it's not too bad, it's dissolved and we've got some paint there. Now what about the more expensive one? Now can you see the difference in color strength? And this was actually one of the better ones in the set. Some of the redder colors, just literally, I mean, you could barely get any pigment out of them at all. But you can see the difference that you get, how much stronger, how much more vibrant, how much more beautiful is the Derwent Ink Tense than this unlabeled brand. Now, this is not an advert for Derwent Ink Tense. There are lots of good brands of watercolor pencils out there. But all I'm explaining to you is that you do absolutely get what you pay for when it comes to watercolor pencils. So mistake number three is a really simple one, but it's gonna make a lot of difference to your watercolor pencil work. And this is blending from the wrong direction. I'm gonna show you what I mean in a minute, so don't worry if you don't understand. But uh, beginners tend to get a lot of hard edges in their work and not necessarily where they want hard edges. And if you've ever seen those effects where you get this lovely sort of blended out effect on paints or on watercolor pencils and you don't know how to achieve it, let me show you what I mean and how you can easily correct this to get much, much better results. So what do I mean by blending in the wrong direction? Now let's imagine maybe some kind of petal and we've got some color at one end and we want to get that effect where it blends out from strong dark color and blends out to nothing. Now what people often do is they start on the pencil area and they take the water outwards. Let me show you how that looks. So there we're dragging that paint outwards. Well, I mean, that looks okay, doesn't it? But it's not really giving us that blended outwards look that we're looking for. It's not fading out so that we get a graduated effect that goes out to clean water. So let me show you a different way of doing it. So I'm gonna take exactly the same pencil and we'll make the start of our little petal. And I'm gonna wet the paintbrush again. But this time, instead of working outwards, I'm going to work inwards. So we're starting up here with clean water and coming in. I'm gonna clean my brush again, just dry it slightly. And again, starting out here on the clean water and coming in. And we could spread that up a little bit, but I'm being careful not to take this strong pigment here and blend it right up this end. And whenever I've got too much paint on my brush, I can just rinse my brush, dry it slowly so it's not dripping, and just drag it back in. And just adjust that as much as I want. I can, if I want to, just take a little 
blush of that pigment around the edge there. And you can see we can get this beautiful blended out effect. So if you ever want an effect like this, don't start at the pigment area and drag downwards because that pigment, if it's a good brand, it will just go on forever. You want to start away from the pigment and come in and then just blend a little bit where the two areas meet until you get the results that you need. And don't forget to rinse and take the excess liquid out of your brush every time you take it back up the other end so you're not dragging this pigment down where you don't want it. At this point, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, could I ask you quickly just to click the thumbs up, just to click the like button. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction, so if you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, it helps my channel to grow. At the moment, we are in the midst of the pandemic. I'm on lockdown here again in the UK, and I can't teach my regular classes, so what I get from YouTube is so, so important. You're literally keeping a roof over my head. I'm so grateful to all of you. Please click like. So for mistake number four, we have not controlling the point of your watercolour pencil. Now often people want those crisp edges and they just don't sharpen the pencils often enough. But also there are times when actually a blunt pencil works better for certain effects. So I'm going to show you when it's good to have a sharp point on your pencil and when it's good to have a much blunter point on your pencil so that you keep on top of this. Always good to have a sharpener on hand when you're using watercolour pencils. So it's really important with your watercolour pencils that you consider the point that you have on them and that you adjust as you go through your watercolour pencil painting. If you've got a sharp point like this one, that's going to be really good for getting you those knee edges. One of the things that can make watercolour pencil work look slightly amateurish is there's always scruffy edges involved. Now if you've got a sharp edge like this, a sharp point, you will be able to get a really, really nice crisp edge like this one. However, a sharp point like this may not be as good for filling in a large area. You can in fact end up getting far too many lines that way. So that's when you want a bit of a blunter point like this when you're doing the filling in part. Maybe as well you actually want some marks. I'm thinking of things like flowers where you want sort of um, you know, spots, spots on leaves, things like that. Much better and much easier to have a big stubby pencil like this than be trying to do it with something like this. So it's not that one's right or one's wrong, but do adjust as you go through your painting and do make sure that if you need a sharp edge, you take the time to stop and sharpen your pencil. And when you've got blunter pencils like this, those are great for shading large areas. Look how easily that shades across, much better than this one where you might get some straight lines appearing. And now you've been neat with your pencil line, you can get that lovely neat edge that you want. So mistake number five is shared across all pencil work. So that's graphite pencil, coloured pencil and watercolour pencils and that's pressing too hard. Now when you press really hard on any type of paper, whether that's cartridge paper or watercolour paper, you dent it, you flatten it and you flatten the grain. And although you can't see the grain, it's really important in dragging colour from your medium onto your paper. And also it can just lead to really, really sketchy looking, scruffy looking results. So I'm going to show you now what happens if you press too hard with watercolour pencils and how you can correct this problem. So when we press too hard, we make it impossible to get any more pigment physically on the paper. You can't see the grain of the paper, not very easily anyway, but it's there and it's what's grabbing on to the colour in your watercolour pencil. So if you press really hard, if you burnish the paper, if you push and push and push, it can become physically impossible to layer any colour over the top of this. And also, if you press really hard and dent the paper, it can be impossible to get a smooth wash once you put your water on. You find there's always something of the underneath marks remaining. So mistake number six is not combining your watercolour pencils with watercolour. And I understand that as a beginner, paint can be a little bit scary and you feel much, much safer working with watercolour pencils. But there's actually a great way of combining them both so that you get the best of both worlds and so that you still have a lot of control over your work. So a few years ago, I was teaching at a local art studio and the owner of the studio, and they used to have lots of tutors in there, the owner of the studio had noticed that uh, polychromos pencils had become a really big thing. Now, polychromos are not watercolour pencils. These are standard coloured pencils. And all of a sudden, Faber-Castell launched these pencils and they were so popular. Everyone was talking about them because they just had such a great colour payoff. So the owner of the studio came to me and said, Michelle, I need a course on polychromos. You can teach that, you can teach that, can't you? I'll book you in. 
And I was just like, um, yeah, I guess. So I had to learn to use colored pencils. And one of the things I did was I decided to, um, for my mother, I decided that I would draw a, uh, a picture of her dog in colored pencils. If I can find, if I can find it on my computer, I'll drop it here so you can have a look at it. And it went quite well. I'm usually quite good at picking up new mediums and I learned a lot, you know, and I watched some tutorials and I got to grips with colored pencils. But the background took me forever. I was coloring and coloring and coloring and it took so long. And you know, later on I thought, oh, that's, that was lovely, but it took so long. I don't know how anyone's got the patience for this. If you've ever worked in standard colored pencils, you know how long they take. And then I spoke to a professional artist who used colored pencils all the time. And she said, oh, she said, you should have put soft pastels in the background. She said, we all do that. And I thought, oh, what an idiot I am. And I realized then that a lot of colored pencil artists, when they have to put a background in, will smudge it in in soft pastel because it hardly notices. It looks really good. And it's just a trick that they've learned. And it's the same really with watercolour pencils and watercolour, if you're wondering what the point is to this story. And the point is that watercolour can just speed up your watercolour pencil work so much, particularly in backgrounds and particularly areas where you need a larger amount of pigment and you just need the paint to spread more easily. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can use watercolour in combination with your watercolour pencils to get a much better result. And don't be scared of it, I think you'll love the effects. So let's go back to our petal shapes and let's say we want even stronger colour. So we could start off like this and then maybe we want to go into some yellow and we could spend ages shading in the rest of that petal in yellow. But really when paint is available, why go to the trouble of spending ages with watercolour pencil? You've got the neatness that you want around here, now you can just take some colour in to meet it. So this colour is diarylide yellow. This is from my Essentials set, which is a collaboration with Jackman's Art Materials here in the UK. If you're interested in those paints, it's a beginner's set. I will put a link in the video description for you. And look at this beautiful effortless effect we're getting by mixing watercolour paint with watercolour pencils. So you've got the ability to be neat with the watercolour pencils and then you can just fill in with the watercolour paint. Another time when it's a really great idea to use watercolour paint is if you've got something sat in the middle of a background. Don't worry about it. You can put the background in first with watercolour paint. Be as loose and splashy as you like. Just leave things fairly light in the centre. And then you've got a ready-made background to work on top of with your watercolour pencils. So mistake number seven with watercolour pencils is not working them onto wet paper. So as a professional artist, I rarely use watercolour pencils as a medium in their own right because I tend to work on very large paintings and they just take too long. Most professional artists will prefer to work with paint. It's generally beginners that like watercolour pencils, but I do use watercolour pencils all the time. And what I use them for is to add details to my watercolour paintings. Now, if you haven't used watercolour pencils onto wet paper or onto wet paint, you're really missing a trick. They release so much more pigment. You can get some fantastic results. Let me show you how it's done. So rather than work with watercolour pencil always onto dry paper and then add the water afterwards, you can work onto wet paper or paint and the pencils will release a lot more pigment. So I'm going to put some clean water on here and we're going to draw straight in and what we'll get is we'll get a much softer outline and more pigment release. So you could do this for things like backgrounds, anywhere that you want a much softer effect and look how much pigment that is releasing. And I'll use the cheaper brand that we tried earlier as well. Won't be quite as vibrant, but really still not that bad. And there we get those lovely soft effects from working directly into water. The other thing we can do is work directly onto paint. So I've got some pink paint, some permanent rose, and I'm going to apply a nice large petal shape. Now, if you're at the stage where you are just starting to learn to use watercolor paints, and you're really not too sure how to get good effects without lots of drawing lines to get these nice smooth effects. I do have a beginner's course that I've just launched. It's actually being built at the moment and I have just opened the doors for pre-sales. So if you're just watching this video, it's just come out. You've got about two weeks to get that at a pre-sale price. Once the course is launched, it'll go up to standard price. But still very good value and you get 10 complete beginner's techniques and I take you through them step by step. So it's a fantastic course if you're just starting out learning to paint or if you've been painting watercolours for a little while, but you really don't feel like you've got any control 
over the medium. That's a great course for you too. So I've applied this nice and smoothly. Let's work in now with some watercolour pencil. So this might be a lily petal. We could get some spots on like this. And in this case, it's actually better to have a blunter point so we've released more pigment. But maybe I want to go around the outside a little bit. And just like I mentioned before, I'm going to go in with a sharper edge there. So you can see that these watercolour pencils aren't only for working alone with, they're actually a really, really fabulous addition to your watercolour paints. And this is how I use them in my own work most often. So do let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful, if you've made any of these mistakes yourself, if you want to share any other mistakes you've made and how you solve those mistakes, feel free to do that as well. If you would like some more watercolour pencils tuition, I've got another great video for you. You can watch that one right now.